Why has the new iPhone 15 launch become such a huge cultural event? Seems like everybody's got their own opinion on it. Yeah, Apple just had its keynote. Let's cue the memes. Introducing the iPhone 15. It's like the iPhone 14, but the same. Did I mention it's more expensive? I'm happy to introduce the titanium iPhone 15. What's new with this one? New? When's the last time we did something new with an iPhone? Every year, around this time, on this month, y'all copy and paste the same products, bro. The iPhone 15 is exactly how my iPhone 14 looks. Uh oh. Damn. Damn. Oh. oh man, it's crazy to think that beyond the Super Bowl, the iPhone launch every year has become like a cultural event that everybody's tapped into. I want to say even more than an election, because if you look at the voting numbers, not that many people are tapped into politics even. So the iPhone's almost like the biggest event in modern culture. Yeah, it's almost like the iPhone launch is almost like a thermometer test for like American innovation or something like that. And also everybody either has an iPhone or has a phone that rivals the iPhone. So that's why everybody's got opinions about it. Is the iPhone impressive? Is it disappointing? What does this say about Apple? One of the most profitable countries, com companies in the entire world. So anyways, guys, we're gonna get into it. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Now, David, while the iPhone 15 launch is highly debated, one thing that is not, is how tasty our new small la sauce is. Guys, we are launching our very own chili oil. Uh, Pre-orders are out today at smalllasauce.com. It is made with real truffle. It gives you that tingling, buzzing sensation in the back of your mouth because of the Sichuan peppercorns. Check it out. Hey, from Sichuan to Sicily. Um, Andrew, back to the iPhone. Here's what's new about it. And it, of course, we're gonna get into why it's so controversial. I'm sure you guys all know about it. It's got a new pro processor. It's got USB type C. It's got a five zoom camera it's now it's made out of titanium there's thinner bezels but the, i guess the titanium's thicker the camera now shoots 24 megapixels instead of 12 and there is a new action button instead of a mute switch but uh some of these things are more limited actually to the pro models uh the pro and the pro max for the iphone 15 right so i guess the pro model is the one that if it was going to impress anybody it's the pro model the regular 15 is pretty much like the 14 Pro Max of last year. Right, right, right. So, so I guess it's you know, not that different. Everybody's looking at what's cutting edge, but for a lot of people like Andrew, our parents, if they upgrade, they're gonna get the iPhone 15. They're not even going to get the Pro Max mm -hmm. because they don't even know what ProRes video is nor do they, will they ever care? Yeah, I mean, I've, after watching some video reviews, I think I would go ahead, and my opinion is that yeah, the new iPhone 15 is not super impressive, but the 15 Pro Max, if you are a filmmaker, you work in social media, you really need that high res camera, you wanna shoot um, 3D videos, okay, it shoots 3D videos, and then it also supports the Academy Award level color science, so literally you can shoot parts of films and have it qualify for that film level, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, because there's enough colors on the color spectrum for it to count. Like right? Olivia Rodrigo just shot a whole music video on an iPhone 15. So I, I, I guess the camera is really good though. Right, 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 right. So like we said, guys, as much as it looks the same, theoretically, if you're a certain type of power user, you may be able to draw a lot more new features out of like the new cameras and the new processors than your average person, right? right. Um, but I also had a quick thought, man. It's just crazy how having an iPhone or hating the iPhone is just like one of the most shared eventful things in American culture nowadays. Everything's so fractured, everything's so fragmented, nobody watches the same shows. You know, you could say Squid Games a little bit and stuff like that, but for example, uh, even the Super Bowl, not everybody cares about the teams in the Super Bowl, but everybody cares about iPhone versus Android or whether Apple is disappointing or would Steve Jobs do what Tim Cook's doing? Yeah, so I would say obviously more people view the live Super Bowl than they viewed the live probably Apple event. Maybe not worldwide, but I guess what I'm saying is that people have opinions about the phone because it's technology and it's not attached to a person or a personality. And that's why people ride for their Android versus Apple team so hard you know it's it's been this debate for like i would say a decade right yeah like people have been debating this and and always making jokes about each other oh green bubble blue bubble whatever so i guess like 
it, it is interesting that the iPhone launch is seen as as such like a uh, 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 a, a, a certain point in of the year, you know? Right, right, right. And, you know, about 60% of the U.S. has iPhone, Android, 25% are Samsung, 15% everybody else. But in other countries, the split is very different. In China and South Korea, iPhones only make up 20% of the market. In India, Android, iPhone consumption makes up 5% of the market. In Japan and the U.K., it makes about 50%. And in France, Android, iPhone consumption market share is 35%. Right. Um, Andrew, Apple is also like sort of sets the tone for like what's going to happen next, right? Like if iPhone, di like if Apple did do a folding phone, like Samsung and a lot of um, Chinese manufacturers are, it would basically signal that everybody got to switch to folding phones, right? Right. Because usually Apple mm. is a little bit later on technology, but that's because they like technically want to perfect it, right? So that if they came out with a folding phone, that would be almost the new standard. What do you think it meant that iPhone was really focusing on sustainability, recyclability, repairability, the environment? And it was like stuff that a lot of gadget geeks who want the bleeding edge of technology and want technology to, you know, my minority report their lives and make it all technological. They don't care about that stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, but Apple... I feel like being they they want to lead the way as far as also kind carbon of carbon like, neutral and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, right? as far as the 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 causes. Um, has technology hit a wall for everybody? Because if Apple's not really pushing the envelope anymore, and they're just throwing in you know pro user features for people who may or may not use them, does the average consumer just go, "Man, this phone is exactly the same," and technology's just not improving anymore? No, nah, I think the average consumer has not fully changed the way that they use their phone. Like the average person probably uses only like 10 different features on their phone on any given day. Uh, probably texting, taking photos. Yeah, just and wanting Instagram. to have a good battery life, not no. needing to plug it into a wall looking uh, crazy. No, let's be real. Let's think about it. If you just have your calendar, you just check your apps, Instagram, Okay, and then you text people and right. then you take photos and, and video, just regular photos and video for Instagram, then no, you actually don't need that many features. Right. You're talking about the bulk distribution, the masses of people. Yeah, you're never like how many people really are use, utilizing their iPhones 100%. So I guess that's why I meant for the average consumer, they haven't fully changed the way that they use the iPhone because I think average people, they just have a limit on what they need. Right. Um, I would say this. Do you think that the average consumer drives the shareholder price? And obviously the reason why Apple wants to drop a new phone every year is because they need new cash flow, right? From the trade-ins and from everything. They need to generate new cash flow, so they need new versions. Andrew, the new Apple Watches, they look almost exactly the same, but you got the double tap feature now. Or is it more blaming the consumer for always demanding a new phone every year? So it's almost like, of course, they're a company. They're in the business of doing business, right? Even though they're technically a consumer technology company, right? So I'm saying that like, is it the consumer's fault for demanding a new iPhone every year? Or is it Apple's fault for pushing it out so the, the upgrades have to be iterative because how much new tech can they really perfect in a year? Oh man, that's a really good question, man. Yeah. I don't know the answer to it, David. Do you have an opinion? Because at the end of the day, think about it. I think that releasing a new iPhone every year or year and a half was like a habit and became something that Apple has to do now. You know, even though at the lower iPhone models, the growth of technology seemed exponential, right? There was a much higher growth curve. From now like the, three to four, it was gigantic, Yeah, from right? the growth curve now, it seems like it's just minor improvements every time. Yeah, and uh, last but not least, Andrew, I still think that it's probably gonna perform okay. At the end of the day, man, people are on their phones, what, realistically, two to eight hours a day, depending on what type of person you are. Right. Like, if you work a certain type of job where you're able to be on your phone, you could be on your phone up to eight hours a day. Yeah. So, realistically, it's almost like you could justify a new phone every year by just the usage rate. Yeah, and I, I think it really is going to matter for the people who don't really have a computer at home. Like, here, we have, like, multiple computers computers we have desktop computers we have mac minis and then we also have um laptops and then we have our phones so for us like but obviously we create media so i could use a better camera i suppose right it to would be good smile lot better right to get higher res of small law being poured on food but other than that i don't really need the most advanced thing right because i have computers but for a lot of people who only have the phone as their only primary like computer, 
I guess I could see why they would need to upgrade. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let's get into the comments section. Make sure you get uh, like this video and get the likes up. Um, somebody said, man, it was so courageous of Apple to deliver the same phone as two years ago. <laughs> um, this was a lot of things. Like I said, obviously for a lot of people, they're not really going to see any major shift except, Andrew, USB-C. So a lot of people were saying, complaining about USB-C, saying like, okay, I already own all the lightning cords. Finally, they're switching over. The EU, they implemented some new law that made Apple switch over. However, Andrew, if you are a power user, some people were saying they didn't announce it yet, but you might be able to plug in two iPhones through USB-C into a camera switcher. So the pro models, so you'll be able to use them as if they were cameras and the USB-C allows for that. So basically... It's setting the tone for a lot more pro usage that they didn't talk about in the keynote. Right, right, right. They're basically like future proofing it. Right. Um, somebody said, I can't wait to see Apple's financials in about nine months. And someone said, yeah, honestly, I think they're going to look great because everybody's still just going to buy it. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said, this is what happens when a company has more managers and marketing people than engineers and designers. This goes back to the, man, it wouldn't look like this if Steve Jobs was still alive. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Steve Jobs was known for spending a ton of money on R&D, but Andrew, sometimes the shareholders, they wouldn't like it because the company wouldn't be as profitable. Right, so are, do you care about the shareholders, which you do have to care about them? Do you care about the customer? Do you care about just pushing technology? And at the end of the day, if the consumer still buys it, are you just going to give them what they want? Yeah. Some people were talking about the action button and how like Samsung has had it for like five years now. But other people were saying the action button seems really great. But how come you can just set it to do one thing? Like how come you can't set the action button to do like 10 different things? Right. No. I mean, hopefully they build that in, to be honest. Someone was saying, I just can't uh, stand the fact that I just know my old iPhone is going to go to ish immediately due to some sort of some sort of mandatory update. Um, some people were saying, man, if we could just rethink the annual release cycle. Other people said, listen, guys, if you're not into microchips and nanotechnology, you do not understand. These new Apple developed chips that they don't need to source from other manufacturers are a really big deal. Mm. This is more of a microchip angle for people into processors and things like that. Wow. Do you know the background the information about this? Is it because that Apple has moved their manufacturing of their own chips to their own factory. Well, I just know they're making people. their own silicone now, which okay. previously they were outsourcing it to a third-party company, obviously. Um, yeah, I do think so. I do think they're setting the tone for something, but the usage like fully hasn't been built out right. yet. But the strength you know, is at there. At the end of the day, you never know, man. Like, even though that this... Like, Apple's whole job, like, their whole goal as a company is not to only wow you as a consumer every time they're like we want to wow people we want to push technology but we also need to set up things in place for the next 20 years 30 years of our business and guess what apple's betting on for the next 20 or 30 years and this is also another controversial point mm. vision pro aka ar vr mm. so they were saying okay now you could take like 3d spatial videos which I don't even really know what that means right because you only got one camera but I guess you got three cameras on there but I guess like People are saying you, everybody's going to be able to like basically go into a, like, let's say your baby's first steps and you capture it in 3D spatial video, you'll be able to put on the Vision Pro and really feel like you're there again. Yeah. So I don't know, guys. It's going to be like no, uh, I mean, Demolition I, I, Man with who Sylvester know, Stallone. Yeah, but who knows in like five years, then we finally see what Apple was doing this whole time. But maybe this iPhone 15 is not the biggest jump, but maybe it's a big jump for their back like operational manufacturing side. Right, so. right. We don't know, but at Apple, they're like, yes, yes, we set the, the platform for the future and all the fundamentals. We are, are set there for the next 30 years. Um, somebody said, ultimately, it's all about iCloud apps and iMessage and the entire uh, ecosystem now. The hardware improvements are always going to be tiny, but it's going to be how everything connects and obviously their ability to extract subscriptions from you. Right, 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 right. Um, ultimately, Andrew, we could go on and on forever. There's about a thousand videos on YouTube right now that have anywhere from like a million views each talking about this. So clearly the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro uh, being like supporting it or going against it, it's, it's just something that people are talking about. What's your opinion, David, for your life and the trade-in value of your current iPhone 14 Pro Max, are you gonna get the 15 Pro Max? Okay, so- And why? All right, I think that uh, I gotta see the reviews when they come out. I got to see the video features ultimately. 
Okay. To make sure that it's worth it for my use case. Because uh, I don't think there's any big jump in battery life. Mm. So I, I think that that, like you said, for your average user, they really just need like better thermals and they need better battery life realistically right for most people but there could be other people who really need a bunch of like lidar scanners and other things yeah like a better lenses and stuff like some people are really going to maximize the new iphone and use it for their work if you can figure out a way to use the camera for your work you are going to do it yeah it's almost like the apple watch ultra you know what i mean like a lot of people don't really need 45 different biometric sensors like but some people it's gonna save their life, right? That crash sensor. But a lot of people, they'd probably be better with like a, a better looking, like much more simple smartwatch, right? Because right, they just right. wanna track their calories. Right, at the end of the day, I mean, listen, uh, is it that hard to figure out whether you're healthy or not? <laughs> but I do think ultimately it reminds me of EVs. You know, at first when people switched to hybrid cars and now people are on the full EVs, like the full EVs ultimately it allows the whole car to be interconnected. There's not a combustion portion and an right. electronic portion. I think that this is setting the future, right? Cause you got Apple Silicon, you got Apple building its own titanium supply chains and stuff like that. It, it, it's going to be for the future. David, you have an Apple watch on right now. Yeah, I do. And it looks, this is an Apple watch four, but it looks like a nine. All right, everybody. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Um, yeah. what do you think about the iPhone 15? Why is it such a big event? Why does everybody care? Even though a lot of people are not going to buy it. I, a lot of people are. But anyways, let oh, me know in the comments down below what you think. Don't sleep on some of the Asian brands, though. I'm telling you, if they ever get like an iMessage type ecosystem, you know, for Android phones, I'm telling you, the features of the notebook folding phones is crazy. All right, everybody. Let us know. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.